Hello and I hope that you are doing very well and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be going over the Bitcoin trading exchange BitMEX. BitMEX is obviously one of the biggest exchanges in the whole of cryptocurrency and recently with its problems I've received many, many questions about BitMEX, whether I'm going to still be trading on it, whether BitMEX in general can be trusted or whether you're you know, best withdrawing everything and moving to a new exchange. So this video is to answer all those questions. People are obviously interested in my opinion on this. So that's what I'll be giving in this video. Uh, so I hope that it's it's beneficial and educational for you on the BitMEX Trading Exchange. So as natural with this type of video, I must start with a disclaimer that this is not financial advice. Do your own research. This is just my opinion on what I am doing. Please do not take this as any kind of financial advice. Do your own research at the end of the day. Just an educational uh, entertainment video. So with that said, let's move on to BitMEX, the trading exchange, what I'm here for, and you know why I'm going to you know, give you your opinions on this. Things to remember, I am a man of the people. I have fought against the Goliaths of this space as a little, little boy. Uh, you know, I fought against these people, and these are primarily the people that are going to be shilling you exchanges right now. I can guarantee people are going to be saying, you know, they're going to be using all of this highlights to say, Stop trading on BitMEX. Come and trade on this exchange. Here's a referral link. Referral link. Referral link. Please join this amazing exchange. Join with the referral link. Okay, that's what you're going to be seeing over the next few weeks. Because people do not care about you. They just want you to join <laughs> join their exchange through their referral link so they will make money off of your fees. Okay, I have never shilled a referral link. I do not plan to shill a referral link. And as you have seen many times, I have fought against these really big accounts that have religious followings, um, you know, identified when their technical analysis is, is incorrect, just plainly incorrect. And off of that, I've, I've received many, many backlashes, okay? A lot of hate, a lot of, you know, off of this one, for example, pointing out that this guy's technical analysis was incorrect. He has a religious following. I lost 500 followers in a day and, you know, just relentless trolls from then on, which is still continuing, by the way. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm here for you. I'm here for the people. And, uh, you know, obviously off the back of this one, we, we rose another 40% in the, in, the, in the coming month. So, uh, you know, that's all, just something to bear in mind here. And I'm just going to give you my honest opinion on this exchange. No ulterior motives in that regards. So uh, let's continue. So BitMEX and exchange FUD in general, which FUD stands for fear, uncertainty and doubt. OK, and many, 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 many times we have seen this in cryptocurrency. And it's always about BitMEX, Bitfinex on Binance. And I refer to everything I'm talking about here is from 2016 onwards. OK, um, you know, we, we've just seen it time and time and time again within cryptocurrency trading. OK, and all the time it's it's resulted in nothing. OK, so the, the, the FUD that comes out results in nothing every single time. It's never resulted in actually being correct or actually having a, a catastrophic, catastrophic effect similar to Mount Gox. That's uh, the anomaly here. OK, but, um, you know, the people that spread this FUD are always going to be shilling you a referral code to another exchange. Nobody really gives an honest opinion. They have ulterior motives. Um, you know, they want to make money off of you in some way and form. And OK, and my my opinion on today, which I'm going to be giving on BitMEX, is based off of statistics, which is going to be volume statistics primarily. That's the thing that we care the most about. OK, and, you know, where, where I'll be going from this. Obviously, I have a uh, just for, for uh, you know, putting it out there. I have a very fond likeness for BitMEX. OK, so I really, really do like this exchange. So it will be a shame for me to leave this exchange just because I have a really big fondness for it. And I'll go over some of the, you know, things that I've done on this exchange in the past. But, um, you know, in later in the video, but and I would just like to say that, yeah, I, I do have a, a likeness for this exchange. My reasonings for like the, liking this exchange are the following. Uh, primarily, yes, uh, it's it's for the volume aspects. OK, so I need to trade trade on an exchange where the liquidity is very high. I do not want to be worrying. Am I going to you know, receive slippage? Am I not even going to get filled? Um, you know, these are two for me very important factors. OK, if you're only trading with a few thousand dollars, then that obviously is not of high importance to you. So you have to remember. Uh, you know, where you are in your in your trading career, how much you're trading with is obviously very important to the exchanges that you are choosing or interested in. For me personally, liquidity is a massive factor. I have to tra trade on a high liquidity exchange. And for me, BitMEX, I have never, never had a problem on BitMEX since I've traded on, on it. The liquidity has always been absolutely top notch. I've traded on other crypto exchanges where this is certainly not the case. 
So with that said, that's why I personally love BitMEX purely and simply for the liquidity that is offered. But the question now is, is this liquidity going to dry up with the recent problems that they have been having? The recent problems I refer to here are Obviously, people got scared earlier this year when there was the big drop in price and BitMEX, um, you know, put their liquidation engines on and stopped a lot of people apparently getting liquidated, uh, stopping Bitcoin going to zero. There's a lot of rumors about why they did this or like, you know, if it's even true, for example. But, um, you know, obviously from that, it recovered. Not many people really left the exchange. There were a few, you know, people left the exchange. The volumes decreased, but then volumes decreased across the board okay because obviously we saw that big decrease in price open interest was you know shattered uh, so it was almost yeah overcut in half the open interest so uh from that we saw a recovery we have seen this general recovery well on in the price the v-shaped recovery but from the exchanges the volume that yeah, open interest has started to recover you can see this is a screenshot from today sits at around 600 million again and that dropped drop down to low 300 million. So we can see the open interest has almost gone um, double over the last few, you know, over the last month, particularly. Um, but obviously, you know, before the big drop we had, we were seeing it around 1 billion open interest. So that went from a billion down to 300 million. And now we sit around 600 uh, million, obviously, on BitMEX there, open interest. So, um, you know, it's recovering. Uh, but the question is now, after. I think the event was two days ago where BitMEX went totally offline. Has this now destroyed people's confidence in the exchange and are they no longer interested in it? These are the statistics that I can present you. So these are the statistics that I got for the champions uh, group today and I presented them with that and I want to share it with you. And this is the statistics of futures volume, open interest, and then just an aggregated kind of like... Um, bar chart here of you know where the exchange is uh, overall volume we can see overall the volume is declining here we're on a downwards trajectory um you know that that's to be expected though in my opinion we are in a sideways range where generally volume does decrease so this is not overly important but the most important things are the you know, the volume and the open interest okay so we can see leading now is huobi okex binance bitmex has gone to fourth place bitmex has always been first or second in this list okay and that's why i've loved it okay I, i'm not uh, i've never traded for a disclaimer i've never traded on huobi or okex they are chinese based exchanges um i've never traded on them i have traded on binance bitmex bybit ftx debrit and bitfinex so i've traded on the majority of these exchanges uh i'll give you now my opinion on them uh, I, I think binance is fine for for altcoin trading decent exchange bitmex i absolutely love for uh bitcoin trading for me it's the number one bitcoin trading and the reasons why i love trading on bitmex is because you get these long wicks okay so some people call them scam wicks and they hate trading on bitmex because of the scam wicks essentially but i actually incorporate these wicks into my trading strategy where i will i absolutely love the wicks because for me i can use them as take profits or entries expecting long wicks to the downside where essentially you take advantage of the over leveraged traders they are essentially stop runs where you will sometimes see sideways stop run stop run back to where you were trading many people do not like that and they refuse to trade on bitmex for that region reason personally i love that and I'm more than happy to trade on BitMEX because I actually <laughs> enjoy the wicks that we see. But nevertheless, um, you know, BitMEX for me is number one for BitMEX for Bitcoin trading. Bybit, I do not like the liquidity in my opinion. It's it's absolutely fine if you are a newer trader. If you're trading with low capital, you should have no problem with Bybit. But you start to increase your position sizes and you have liquidity issues, you know, filling orders. It's not the best. Maybe it's increased. I haven't I haven't used it over the last few months, but I, I originally used it when it was released. Didn't really like the quality. Just my opinion. FTX, yeah, it was it was okay. I only spent a few, about a week on it. it wasn't I didn't really enjoy it. Uh, Debrit is good if you like trading options, primarily because it's the only exchange which offers you long expiry dates. So I believe um, their current one, their longest expiry date is into January. Okay, we're obviously only sat in May at the moment. So that's that's for bit for obviously if you're referring to the stock market, this is still not a long expiry. But for Bitcoin, it's the longest expiry that you're going to get on options. So that Debra is the place to go if you enjoy options trading. Um, and then Bitfinex has obviously died. Yeah, the volume on this is just it's just it fell off a cliff. And this was obviously off the back of all the fud that was around Bitfinex. Okay, over the last few years, it just never recovered. If we're honest, open interest we can see uh, OKEx and Bitmex are the joint top. Okay, and then you know quite falling off a bit. We have Huobi, Binance, and you know going going down there. So the in terms of open interest, we can still see Bitmex is a market leader. But in terms of the daily volume, Bitmex has definitely fell off uh, from its top spot there, coming down into fourth place. 
So is this a, is this a worry for me? Am I leaving BitMEX? Am I going to remain on BitMEX? Uh, the answer to this is I am not going to rush into a decision. I'm not going to leave BitMEX. I am still trading on BitMEX as we speak. Okay. Um, so I'm not kind of scared by this. I'm not, you know, I've seen it time and time and time and time and time again. I'll give you some examples of the chart. Okay. So if we flip over to this chart, there are obviously uh, a big standout one would have been in uh, early around mid 2019, where we obviously saw this 15% decrease in price. This was off of the back of a uh, uh, this was off the back of Bitfinex FUD, where Bitfinex was apparently going to court, they were going to get shut down, and no one was ever going to be able to trade on it again. And that caused a 15% decrease in price. But guess what? It ended with an 80% increase in price. And this was an amazing buy the dip opportunity. As you can see here, we have had this recent news, which has caused a decrease in price. The question that's up to you to decipher is, does this equal another opportunity to buy? And we see an increase in price. This FUD here equaled a big increase in price. But we have seen this again and again and again. Here's a few more examples. This is from was from 2018, OK, where, you know, I was just stating that, you know, the fear that's caused around Tether is this was in regards to Tether. There was a Tether FUD going around and um, people were selling all their Tether and buying Bitcoin, e.g. was making Bitcoin increase in price. So opposite than what we have here. Uh, but in my opinion, it was, you know, in the off the back of, you know, this was really a good short opportunity. OK, and as you can see here, um, you know, just just also saying that for me, like the, these FUD events are not not good trading opportunities. So here we saw Bitcoin increase, which in my opinion was a good reason to short that rally to trade it back down. OK, and we can see from the this this was only after it moved 0.73 percent. But we all know that rally that we got off of the off of the uh, FUD. Obviously, we, we, we in the end decreased to th just over just over three thousand dollars. So that obviously ended in an amazing trade. But, um, you know, you've got to think that these these FUD events have every time we've seen them, they've, they've given the a result of what was not to be expected by the general public. OK, um, so that's just another thing to bear in mind there that, you know, we've seen these events many, many times and they, they never actually manifest into something big. OK, uh, so that's what I just want to bring your your attention to there. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my opinion. OK, so just simply my opinion, not again, financial advice. I personally am going to stay on BitMEX uh, until I see a sign to leave. And I'm going to this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this a week. If this volume does not recover and we see the, the daily volume continue to decrease, then I will leave BitMEX. I'm not married to this exchange. I will happily leave to a higher volume, higher liquidity exchange. Currently, the volume has decreased, but it's still absolutely fine for trading the the, the uh, the liquidity is fine. I can fill positions. So I'm, I'm not worried about it at the moment. It's obviously decreased over the last 24 hours, but it's it's nothing major. But if this does continue to decrease and we see, for example, other exchanges taking that volume, then yes, I will be happy to leave BitMEX and I'll go to the exchange that has the volume. OK, that's the only thing I care about. Secondly, I want to highlight to you that after BitMEX did go offline. They let you withdraw funds straight away at times where they do not let you normally withdraw. So in my opinion, this is a, a sign of goodwill. This is them saying, sorry, we messed up, but we are going to give you the option of withdrawing your money if you want to. Think to yourself, if this was shady, if this was really something bad, what have they said to you? We're sorry, you can withdraw your money if you want to. I, I personally believe that you know, if there was shady, they they wouldn't have then let you freely withdraw your money because millions millions came out of the out of the out of that exchange. So, um, you know, that's something for you to decide at the end of the day. But in my opinion, that was a nice goodwill gesture. But moving on to that, never, 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 never put all your money on one exchange, especially cryptocurrency. You have to think is the, things to think about. Is there insurance on your exchange? If that exchange is hacked, are you backed up for the money that you had on it? Okay, um, you know, for example, like if we look at an exchange such as Coinbase, then we know there's insurance. But, you know, it is BitMEX backed by the, uh, by the FCA? <laughs> I know. So, you know, be sensible where, where you put your money. Have a diversified portfolio. This is obviously should be diversification outside of cryptocurrency as well. But if you're only in cryptocurrency, then diversify between exchanges. OK, just be sensible with your money. Um, that's just a general uh, tip. Um, but yeah, that's that's the way that I would do it. Diversify a little bit, you know. Uh, you can, cannot go wrong with that at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinion on BitMEX. I'll stay on it for another week. I'll see how the volume goes. If I see evidence so with statistics here that money is going to other exchanges and I'm starting to get liquidity issues, I'll happily switch. Looks as if Binance is, is, is taking this, if we're honest here. 
Um, so yeah, that's something I'll monitor over the coming week and then I'll happily give you an update uh, for those interested uh, of what I'm doing. Uh, and then I wanted to end the, end with this on a little history, a little, a little throwback Thursday, being a Thursday today of how I traded, why I have a personal love for BitMEX. This was my personal reason for loving this exchange. And obviously it was uh, the majority of the trades I took throughout early 17, late 2000, well, early 2018, late 17, we obviously had been shorting this exchange as was good memories of Aaron, <laughs> shorting this exchange all the way from every single rise that we had from 17,000, shorting every single rally till we reached 3,000. And this was all done on BitMEX. So I have to say, I have a big love for this exchange, absolutely big love for this exchange, um, because it allowed me to take many of these short positions. So um, yeah, this was a little throwback through memory lane as I was going through my memories of BitMEX and why I fell in love with it. It was a brilliant exchange. Uh, but yeah, these are some of my insights that you could just find this for interesting purposes. And I can also use it to say, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously my thought process back here, this was obviously in June, was that we would extend sideways till November, that this rally here, this this dump it from here was going to end in a short squeeze from 6,000, which will end in a bull trap. So I was expecting to get this short squeeze from 6K before we ultimately go sideways and move down in price. Have a guess what happened. We saw off the back of this a 30% increase in price, a absolute short squeeze before going sideways till November the 12th, where we saw our decrease in price over 50% to $3,000. Obviously, that was my update back in August saying, I am expecting this to go to 3K. What happened two months later, we went down to 3K. So those were some nice predictions. And why I love BitMEX, if I'm honest. Those were all, those were all shorts taken on that exchange. So that's why I absolutely fell in love with it. And uh, man back then, even better today. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've enjoyed the reasonings why I'm personally staying on BitMEX. I'm not worried about it at the moment. I've seen this for time and time and time again. At the end of the day, it just gave me good trading opportunities. Um, and that's how I'm continuing to, to do it at the moment, if I'm honest with you. So I hope that you've enjoyed my insights and opinions on BitMEX here. Um, you know, thank you. And I hope you've enjoyed really. Cheers and have a good one. Bye.